We're Allie and Holly, two teachers that met five years ago while teaching in the UAE. We've recently decided to pursue our dream of full-time traveling. The plan is to start exploring Europe one country at a time. If you're new to our channel, please hit the subscribe button to join us through the highs and lows of our travel adventures. Also, we're really excited about our new website, so please be sure to check it out and sign up for our mailing list to get news and updates from One Way Ticket. In our current travel series, we start off our European adventure exploring the spectacular Mediterranean country of Greece. In this vlog, we take you on a tour of Athens' most famous landmark, the Parthenon. We woke up early today so that we could get to the Parthenon before it opened, so that way we could be there without the crowds. So we had to get some to-go coffee, some to-go breakfast. We just got off the subway station and now we're trying to find the southeast gate entrance because that's supposed to be the less crowded of the two entrances. We've had our first false start. We got off at the wrong station and now we're gonna have to take the long walk uphill to the intended entrance. We just made it in time. The doors literally opened a minute after we arrived. The first thing we're going to be doing is going straight to the Parthenon because it should be emptier than usual. Finally made it to the top. It was a 10 minute long hike, but we had to beat the crowds and it was completely worth it because here we are at the Parthenon. There's just a handful of people here and the sun is just rising. It looks absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so the Parthenon was built to worship the goddess Athena, after which the city of Athens is named after. From this viewpoint, you can see all of Athens. You can see all of the white houses. The sunset is really sunrise. Sunrise? Sunrise. I always mix those two up. The sunrise is really pretty, so we decided to get here early, which I think that was a good choice because now the crowds are starting to come in and it's getting busier, busier by the moment. So we we didn't stop at all of the sites along the way, we just made our way straight to the top to see the Parthenon before the crowds got here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our way back and check out all the other sites as well. One recommendation we would definitely have for you guys if you plan on visiting here is to pre-book your tickets online. If you do that, you can just walk straight in as soon as the gates open rather than having to wait outside in a long line. Yeah, and it's good to get here probably around 7.45 because the gates open at 8 and then you can be one of the first people to come up here to see the Parthenon. From this hilltop where the Parthenon is situated, you can actually get fantastic views of the entire city. In front of me, you can just about make the outline of the sea. The mist is slowly lifting up and behind me is the entire city of Athens. They say the Acropolis where the Parthenon is that there are no straight lines. I was looking at me a bit weird but that's a QI reference for all my QI fans out there. I watched a video that said that they built the top part to kind of dip like this and then the columns kind of lean in so it isn't straight. Yeah. Mm. I didn't read that. So the Parthenon is made out of marble and we watched a video last night that shows us that there is a quarry that's about 17 kilometers from Athens and that's the place where they found the marble and then they built a road to bring the marble back to this location and even today with all the modern technology that we have it's still difficult for them to get this marble so I can't even imagine how difficult it must have been when they initially were building the Parthenon. I'm just glad I was born in modern times because coming here, there's no way I could have been a construction worker. It was tough just getting up here. But to bring a 10 ton piece of column with me? No, not for me. Even though I did say that the Parthenon was built as a temple to worship the goddess Athena, throughout the ages, it has taken on other roles. So even during ancient Greek times, it was used as the financial central bank. Since then throughout the ages as different civilizations have come and gone uh, it's been used for a variety of different purposes 
Um, it was used as a church, a mosque, uh, and even once as an arsenal for the Ottomans, which actually did blow up, causing a lot of damage to the Parthenon, which is what we see today. So the Parthenon isn't just an ancient building, it's kept up with this time. They've got Wi-Fi here, so that's pretty good. And it's a hotspot for all the would-be influencers to get their Instagram shot, including us. For our American viewers who might find coming to Greece a bit hard or even far, there's another Parthenon in Nashville. So um, if you're near that area or in America, you can also go check that out. Nashville also has great food and good music, so it's pretty similar to Athens. It can get kind of confusing um, when you're talking about the words Acropolis and Parthenon. So what we found out is that Acropolis means high city. So this entire area that's built up on top of this hill is an Acropolis. Um, and then the Parthenon sits at the top of the Acropolis. Yes, I've been misusing those words, so do forgive me. But if I keep making that mistake from here on out, then feel free to write anything in the comments. <laughs> so one of the cool things about coming to the Acropolis is that aside from the Parthenon, and yes, I did use both of those words correctly, there's a bunch of different buildings just dotted around here so we're gonna go to the one literally right next to it and find out what it is so the building next to the Parthenon is called the Ereshithan uh, probably pronounced it wrong however this building was named after the mythical king of Athens it is literally right next to the Parthenon this is the Ereshithan and that's the Parthenon right there so we've seen the two main buildings, the Parthenon and the other one. Say it, what is it? Ephesus, the one for the mythical king of Greece. Um, I feel like the, this one, the one for the mythical king of Greece, whose name I shall not destroy, is better preserved, but it's a lot smaller. I like how the statues are still on the side of it. Yeah, it's a lot better preserved, I guess. They didn't, no one blew it up during the 17th century, so I think that helps. And now I believe we're just gonna walk down to the entrance and see all the other buildings. Now there's the Theater of Dionysus, then mm. there's the Nike Temple. There's a few other ones. It's 10 o'clock, two hours later, and it is getting absolutely packed with tourists and sightseers. So if you do want to come here, I strongly advise to come early in the morning, be one of the first few, you can get absolutely amazing views without the masses of tourists. So this behind me is, I think the theater of Dionysus, and it is the oldest theater in the world. Yeah, no, it turns out this wasn't the Theatre of Dionysus. This is the Odeon of Herodotus Atticus. Uh, he was some other guy who donated the city of Athens. Yeah, man, sound guy, made a theatre after himself. It's, um... How about you figure it out first and then you tell everybody? Read it first. Get so now that I know everything, <laughs> This is the Odeon of Herodotus Atticus. Um, it was donated to the city of Athens by, guess who? Herodotus Atticus in memory of his wife, Regila. It is now used for musical events, philosophical lectures and whatnot. So we're just slowly making our way down the hill, or should I say Acropolis, and we are slowly visiting all the things that we miss on our way up. It's pretty cool. They're just remnants of an old lifestyle, an old way of life. Finally, we have found the theater of Dionysus. 
this is actually the oldest theater in the world. For all those people who aren't familiar with Greek gods, Dionysus is the god of theater, wine, and partying. He sounds like a good time, all in all. Holly said something profound. <laughs> For once. I was just thinking, <laughs> we're sitting right across from the theater of Dionysus, and I was just thinking how, you know, today we have movies and Broadway shows, and the origins of all of those things came from right here. This was the first theater. So I just think stuff like that is so cool when you get to go and visit the original Spot. place where things started. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, just the fact that this was built, what, 2,400 years ago? And it's essentially the birthplace of democracy, the birthplace of theater. Incredible to think yeah, about it. I just want to sit here and soak it all in. Yeah. And that's what we're going to be doing now. Yeah. You look thrilled. I'm soaking it. <laughs> but it is. Like, it is. Honestly. <laughs> like the foundations of modern civilization, democracy, justice, rule of law, drama, theater, all the things that makes us human stem from here and you get to watch it one hour vlog so thank you so that sums up our tour of the acropolis and i feel that it's time for breakfast we're gonna head to the placa district we're in the placa district which is an area filled with restaurants and we're sitting down after a long morning and I've ordered a Greek breakfast. So it comes with coffee and orange juice and Greek yogurt with honey and some eggs with feta cheese. Right, we are both fed. The breakfast was so good. I think that was the best Greek yogurt that I've ever had. The honey in it tasted so nice. And the eggs and feta cheese with the bread. Oh, it was so yummy. Safe to say Holly is one happy customer. <laughs> Anytime food is good, I am happy. If I get food somewhere and it's not good, I get really disappointed and upset. So, yeah. And now we're going to continue with the rest of our ancient Greece tour. We're going to go to Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Arch. Hadrian's Arch, <laughs> the Temple of Zeus, and the first Olympic Stadium. Right past the Hadrian's Arch is the entrance to the Temple of Olympian Zeus. And it looks like there's not too much left remaining of this temple. Let me look at my fact sheet and see what's important about this place. Audi always carries a fact sheet. <laughs> I do. He hates being wrong. No, I don't hate being wrong, but I, I did my research about places and I just want to check it out. It's, it's very the... PC. No, I'm not. <laughs> so the Temple of Olympian Zeus uh, is kind of under construction there's only a handful of columns standing and they're covered in scaffolding and the rest are just pieces uh, but you do get a pretty cool view of the uh, Acropolis um, and Hadrian's Arch and Hadrian's Arch but this place itself not much to see especially with the scaffolding oh there's some action happening slow down there buddy well, we did say just minutes before that there's not much to see or do here, but then a wild turtle just appeared and a wild one. He's actually legging it. I mean, here's the sirens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> so, from the Temple of Zeus, we walked around five minutes just down the road to the first Olympic Stadium. This is pretty special.
So this stadium was initially constructed over 2000 years ago and for the longest time it was used as a means to host games for the ancient Greeks. As the time went on, unfortunately the stadium fell into ruin. However, in the 19th century, uh, the spirit of Olympic Games were revived when the first modern Olympic Games actually took place here in 1894. The stadium is made entirely of marble. So where I'm sitting right now is the seats reserved for the king and the queen. These are the VIP seats. Holly bought a seat. They just happened to be in the last row. Typical of Holly to get the cheap seats. Found my seat, finally. It's the second last row. Holly has challenged me to a race. However, there's a handicap for me. I have to run the full track while she runs half a track because she claims she is that slow. I am that slow. You'll see, you'll still beat me. She probably is, <laughs> but let's get it. So we're gonna do a small sprint race and I'm gonna stand over there and Holly's gonna stand in the middle of the track and this is the finish line. So it's just doing a semicircle loop at the end of the track. Right. The camera is set up. This is the finish line. Holly is over there. Can you give us a wave? And I am going to be on the other side. Let's get this. Three, two, one, go! Let's start at the same distance. I'll be good. Let's just see. Now we're gonna run at the same distance. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what? I refuse to lose. So I was on the outer lane, but he still beat me. <laughs> now let's do a fair one, come on. No, no. Finally, I won. <laughs> so this is the tunnel that the athletes went down before they entered the track. So imagine, as soon as you exit the tunnel, you hear the crowds cheering your name. One way ticket! <laughs> it's time to get on the podium, Holly. Ended up in first place, so obviously she yeah, first goes place. there. Mm -hmm. According to her, I ended up fourth place in a two-person race, so I'm not, I'm not even allowed on the podium. So for him, but yeah. I'll allow second place for you. <laughs> we have finished our day out in ancient Greece, and because we're in 2021 and we're in the inclusive period in our lives. Everyone gets first place. Nope. You get second, I get first. <laughs> <laughs> Our day in Athens started off by visiting the Parthenon and the Acropolis area, and then we took a little break and had lunch in the Platka district, and then finally we're gonna end our day at the Olympic Stadium. We had a lovely time exploring the ancient Athens monuments. 
Thank you so much for watching our video. We have new videos coming out twice a week now, so please subscribe and get your one-way ticket with us. Stay tuned for our next vlog where we continue to explore the wonderful city of Athens. We see the changing of the guard ceremony and the ancient agora of Athens. How does it feel to be at the birthplace of modern civilization? Do you feel extra civilized? The Parthenon itself is a temple for the goddess Athena. <laughs> Athena is what Athens was named after and she is the goddess of war, love and I believe fertility. Or is that Aphrodite? I don't know. <laughs> That's Greek facts with Ali. If it wasn't for this place where we are right now, there would have been no Meryl Streep, no Pierce Brosnan. Those are your go-to actors. No, they started Mamma Mia. So what I'm trying to say is they completed the full circle coming here to film Mamma Mia. They didn't film Mamma Mia here. In Greece they did. They did, but on the islands, not here in Athens. CGI. Or maybe they did film some of it in Athens, I don't know, but I'm assuming they filmed it on an island. I'm not entirely sure myself. They could have just filmed it in a Hollywood studio. That's true too. Well, that point is moot. 